guys, welcome to the August issue of Shutter Magazine. I'm Philip Bloom, and we're talking about invisible light. So uh, if you read the article, you know invisible light, when I talk about that, is kind of uh, the opposite of the fearless brand of, um, of lighting technique, which I actually love that epic fearless brand of lighting. Um, you know, splattering unexpected colors on backgrounds and silhouetting people, shooting through prisms and causing refractions. Um, that kind of photography that you look at and you just can't even reverse engineer it because it's just, it's so wonderful as a work of art. I love that, but myself and talking to other photographers who are well known for that style of photography, everyone admits to me that when they shoot those images, that really only makes up about 10% or less of their work. And the rest of our images are epic for a completely different reason. It's because we can bring our flash under control and blend it into the natural light. Um, just show off the ambiance of a reception room or the beautiful environment without um, making it obvious that we're there as a photographer intruding on the moment. So one of the things I did not cover directly in the article, but it was probably the first thing you thought about when I mentioned invisible light, uh, is blending your flash into the ambient light color-wise. Because you know your, your flash puts off kind of a bluish light, a bluish hue of light that doesn't necessarily match the warm daylight or the off-colored uh, greenish lights in, inside a venue. Um, so generally, um, gel, gelling is what you think of. How do you blend and make invisible light by gelling? I'll go over it quickly. The concept is simple, uh, but then I'll tell you what I do that's a bit different. So typically, all you need to know is if you want to take white balance into control, your daylight outside is about 6,500 on the Kelvin scale. So you can set your camera to Kelvin white balance and manually choose that number 6500. Your white balance outside in bright daylight will look good. If you go indoors and suddenly the lighting is cooler, has a, let's say your, your flash has a bluer hue, then you're actually going to just ramp up that number above 6500 to add some warmth so that your bluish light will look warmer and natural um, if you want that look. So after in a, in a mixed lighting room, maybe indoor lights are all kind of incandescent and orangey. What you can do is stick an orange filter in front of your bluish light, warm it up so all the lights in the area look similar, and then to compensate, you just actually cool down your Kelvin number, bring it down under 6500. You can learn all the numbers and, and what type of lights they match to, or most of your cameras have a live view mode, and that's what I do. I just stick it on live view and scroll that Kelvin number up or down until it looks like the proper white balance. The issue with that, and what I want to get to, is the fact that I almost never use these. <laughs> it's good to know how. I do it in the studio when I control everything. But on a wedding day, on location, I can't control a room where there's incandescent light and fluorescent light and DJ freaking flashing lights all mixed together at a videographer, and there's no way you can balance the mess that is in front of you. So rather than try, <laughs> uh, what I've found and if you've seen my setup, you know um, we just switched over to uh, our spider holsters, which has been incredible. Um, I don't have any more like lassos or, or any kind of uh, harnesses or anything holding my gear to me. I generally have two cameras. One of them is filming now. Um, and so I just have my hands completely free to work with my lighting. Um, my cameras aren't swinging around or hitting the floor when I kneel. So I just really recommend checking out spider holster. Um, even if I take one camera off the holster, I'm still even. It's like a hiking pack type fit uh, and completely inconspicuous. So you're comfortable at the end of the day. Um, and then I've got my hands free whenever I need to mess with lighting. What I generally do is using radio poppers. Uh, you know I've used pocket wizards for years and I've even done classes on how to troubleshoot all their problems. I found radio poppers are just completely intuitive and, and nicer to use. So. Let's say I'm in a reception room before everyone comes in, and I want to shoot some of the details, some of the uh, centerpieces on the tables. Um, but it's ugly, dim orange lighting. If I shoot it at a high ISO just so it'll show up, it just looks flat and kind of ugly. There's, there's no life to it. Uh, what I'll do is I'll stick my on-camera flash here. I'll bounce it so that that light goes over to a nearby wall and hits the centerpiece from the side if I can. If it's a big open spacious room, um, then I'll actually take this, I'll take a, well, I'll take my umbrella, put it to the side of my detail that I'm shooting, move back and, 
and shoot with side lighting. It doesn't have to be really in the front too much like I would for a portrait because I don't need to light both eyes like I would with a subject, a portrait subject. I can actually just make more dramatic side lighting. But the problem with that is the background, the other side of that reception room, it still looks orange and flat and it's kind of encroaching on this beautiful blue white light that I have on my nicely white balanced foreground, my centerpiece. So what I do instead, let me just conveniently put that away, no trouble at all. Um, I'll, show, I'll remove this umbrella so you can see what I've got back here. My stand always has two lights on it um, using Scott Robert Lim's big boy bar and there's other attachments you can do to hook multiple flashes to a stand. Um, outside that gives me more power and I'm never struggling to overpower the sun when I need to. And inside I can take one of these off at any time and for that reception I'll go take this and put this flash at the very back of the room, maybe on the last table back there, and point it towards myself, towards the back of the centerpiece. Um, I'll set it on a manual setting, a low manual setting. I can do that with using my radio poppers all from my flash or from my menu. I'll put it on manual setting, shoot, just that flash going off, and I can see when it starts to show up. And it fills the whole space with that evenly colored, bluish, even lighting that matches my white balance, which is great. Because now all I have to do is turn my side flash back on and shoot, and I've got this beautiful sculpted light and everything in the background coming toward me it looks like that same color, and I've got clean white balance throughout the picture. So I hope that helps. That is how you can get some clean white balance even in a hotel room, the same technique earlier in the day to get white balance without having to gel anything. Um, and if you want more examples of this, uh, some of the before and after, how we're setting up our lighting, check out our blog right now at bloomphotography.com slash blog. And while you're there, you can download a free ebook um, that we're offering for all of our posing and how to lead a portrait session uh, to get the most effective light and poses during, uh, during a shoot. So I hope that helps, guys. Enjoy your summer, and best of luck.